All right. Are you happy and back with your ice cream? We're here for the next talk, and we have a change, as you might have seen in the online program. Um, not Dr. Sachs is here, but you could say Dr. Now no, you say Marius Eschen is here, the executive assistant to Dr. Sachs from the Harbor Ham Hamburg Port of Authority. And he's going to talk about the digital twin when visualization technology meets AI for better port management. So let's see what they move around there at the port and what's going to be digitalized and how the twin is working. Thank you very much for joining us, mm -hmm. short notice, and I hope you have a great 12 minutes right on the clock. Please give him a hand. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Uh, I never did this with its 12 minutes uh, style, but yeah, I will try it. Um, and thank you uh, for this um, introduction. And um, now I just want to say that I want to talk about Digital Twins. That is just one project of the Port Authority uh, we had in our digital and innovative team. And uh, yeah, uh, let's see what's in for us and for our stakeholders as well in this project. Um, at first, uh, I want to give you some facts and figures about the Port of Hamburg, um, because I'm not really sure how familiar do <laughs> are you uh, with that uh, with that area and with the numbers and with the size and so on. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I would say in the first, um, the the total area of the harbor is uh, 72 uh, square kilometers. So it's uh, we are dealing with roughly 10 percent of the uh, total area of Hamburg. Um, just to give you an indication of how big that is, uh, that is about 10,000 uh, soccer fields. So it's uh, really big, uh, and we are um, yeah, a tidal harbor, so uh, that um, ships can access uh, the, the port with a maximum depth of uh, 50 meters. Yeah, we are about 100 kilometers away from the North Sea. That has uh, advantages, but also disadvantages. Um, but we see that on another slide. Um, sorry? <laughs> Yeah, we are located in the middle of the heart of Hamburg and uh, we have about uh, 35 kilometers of K-walls, uh, 320 of them, um, uh, 320 um, places for, for vessels and uh, 38 are qualified for really big ships. So the big vessels you maybe know from the, from the internet or maybe you also seen one of them with 20, 22 uh, thousand toys and um, yeah, they are really impressive and um, yeah, we can handle them. And as a whole, the port is a significant part of Hamburg. And uh, besides that, um, more than 150 people are working directly and indirectly uh, for, the, for that branch and in the harbor. So, um, and if you are uh, coming from Hamburg, then you know uh, the port uh, in Hamburg is, a, is part of everyday life and always uh, present. When you're driving, for example, around the subway, you, you can see it and yeah, you can also use uh, the, the, um, the ships uh, when you have this uh, half of whole card and uh, the public transportation card and so on. It's, it's really impressive. If you've uh, never been in the, in the port, you have to do that. And uh, yeah, the, the port is a center for industry and businesses, but also for events and the citizens uh, of this beautiful city. So, and that brings me to the next slide, um, where we uh, want to speak about some of these friction and conflicts, or uh, um, conflicting interests more, more than um, uh, we have to deal with. Because typically uh, we have the problem that, for example, we have to reduce emission at the same time we have to protect the environment. But we, are, we, are, uh, we have also to ensure uh, that the flow of traffic is fast, reliable, reliable and safe. And um, just to, to give you that example, um, that are completely um, different um, interests of stakeholders. So, and uh, yeah, we have to deal with them. But if you ask me, uh, yeah, it's really easy because we just have to reduce emissions, promote alternative energy solutions. We just uh, have to create buffer zones between the uh, residents and the activities in the area of the port. Yeah, and so, uh, uh, and a lot of more things. But uh, as you know, it is not so easy. Um, but to, to um, uh, t yeah, to, uh, to, to, uh, yeah, we use these mega trends uh, to achieve uh, these goals uh, we have here in this city. 
and um, yeah, smart solutions, a new business model utilizing uh, new technologies. And we try to uh, use them for different services we want to establish in the port for our stakeholders and so on. So in our uh, opinion, um, the so-called uh, smart port program, uh, what was established in 2015, which is mainly, uh, oh, yeah, mainly for the World Port Conference, IAP-8, it's the International uh, Port Authority, uh, Port Conference in the world. Um, we started that in 2015, as I said, and uh, we, we bring in 25 prototype projects. So I, uh, our idea is, or was uh, to show more than just uh, presentations and so on. We want to show real projects. So uh, yeah, we implemented them. And uh, that was really interesting because a lot of uh, participants uh, at this event were fascinated about that technology change and how uh, the impacts uh, could also, or the, how the harbor could also benefit from that uh, mega trends and technology changes. So from our point of view, it could be a possible solution and also a vision for the sorry, future. <laughs> sorry. Um, okay, but now let's go to, the, to this uh, digital twin thing. Um, uh, at first, I want to give you a little definition of that. Yeah, digital twins um, are vi virtual images and physical objects or systems, and they are uh, visualized in AR or VR and uh, using components from the IoT world. So, yeah, sensors and connectivity and so on is, uh, is uh, yeah, uh, needable. And uh, the sensors then records condition of physical o objects so that the digital twin enable us uh, to maintain and monitor and uh, further uh, control uh, with different functionalities all real counterparts. And uh, as well, we want to try to uh, use this data as well for, for simula uh, simulations. For example, if you have these big bridges in the harbor, um, uh, they get older and older, and um, you need to, to check them from, from a, a yearly uh, basis uh, if they uh, are still available for the, for the public transportation and so on, for the trucks and the traffic. And therefore, um, sensors are really uh, relevant for our infrastructure. Yeah. Um, but uh, to go a step deeper, yeah, uh, our vision is to visualize the complete port with all its uh, infrastructure and processes in Digital Twin. Um, to achieve the following. Just to give you an example, um, support planning processes for construction projects, and we want to uh, uh, include also citizen participations so that you, as a, a citizen of the city of Hamburg, could, uh, could also um, see the projects before they are implemented in the real world, and maybe you can also make some uh, changes or you, you can talk with us about that project. That is one solution, another, uh, one goal. Another idea from us is um, to, to perform um, simulations to assess the impact of changes before we did that impl uh, implementations, and as well uh, to support operational processes, uh, e.g. Uh, for in, in, in the maintenance uh, processes and so on. And um, after that, uh, with linking uh, that to the to the sensors, we get the connection to the real world, right? Yeah, another business case is to. Um, oh, sorry. To using ah, you don't see that <laughs> slide as well. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, to to uh, go to go to the business case, uh, we see. Um, is for example, uh, we want to implement uh, and use building information modeling. Uh, it's so-called BIM. Uh, it's a, yeah, a technology or methodology uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, see not only the, the plannings and the drawings, but also uh, to, to um, integrate or to link them to all the relevant information so that you have the real or the right information at the right place in the right situation. Uh, so the, the engineers or the, the, the architects and so on who are working on this infrastructure um, building has all the plans uh, at, their ha at their hand. Yeah? Um, and um, with BIM, uh, yeah, until today, uh, we have been used hand drawings and three 2D cut drawings or 3D models, but uh, only pr to present the geometry. 
and now we bring all in this, or we link that with this, uh, with this um, re yeah, relevant information, as I said in the beginning. Oh, here are some more pictures <laughs> for you, if you can see them. Yeah, and in the end, you see here on the right side uh, the coast, um, the the time, uh, and uh, yeah, some some other metadata uh, of, of the objects, right? Okay, to show you a movie how a colleague of mine is working in this VR world, um, I bring you in this uh, video. And here you see the guy who is working here with this, uh, you know that maybe from science fiction movies, no, yeah, you're a technology guy, so you know them, maybe from your daily life, but um, yeah, he's wearing a virtual reality uh, glass, and, and now he's uh, going deeper in that, um, in that um, digital twin or in the digital world, um, and yeah, he can, he can yeah, look around, can see, uh, different different uh, types of, of, of the infrastructure and so on. And, oh, I'm good in the time, as I see. Uh, um, okay, I will skip that. I, I think you know what, uh, what's going on here. Yeah, he, he, he could also implement some, some uh, architectural buildings and so on. He can, uh, for example, switch on the layer to show some, uh, some architecture uh, buildings, geometry and so on. Yep. Um, some pictures for you, but we have to go a slide, uh, go a step faster through it, uh, through this. But I want to stop here. Um, this is our new fire uh, boat, uh, which is um, which was uh, bought by the fire brigade. Um, maybe you know know that uh, boat. Um, and we developed that model completely in uh, VR with the colleagues to see if that uh, would work for the captains and their team, for example. And the colleagues could enter the ships and test everything, like the freedom of movements and so on. And that is really cool because they can, they can enter the, the digital world before we have yeah, uh, going to the, to the um, solution provider and build that um, ship in real. <laughs> Another cool uh, thing is that, for example, you have the, uh, this visualization, visualization of this new cruise terminal in the harbor city. And um, yeah, they don't have so great images here, but um, yeah, it's the same, same procedure as I mentioned uh, before. At first, we have these 2D plans. Um, OK, we couldn't see anything. If, if you're not an expert, it's really useless for you. And um, to bring that in the digital world, on the 3D world, uh, it's more easy to see what's going on here and to see what's role. And that's okay, really hard yeah. for you. Maybe somebody wants to ask you about If you want to, to learn more, go to smartcitycombust.com. Uh, dot de. <laughs> de. Yeah, right. Sorry. Any questions? Six minutes from the audience. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry. Thanks for this interesting talk. I um, would like to know how um, companies could actually interact with this data. Is it possible for, for example, autonomous shipping companies to access this, um, this geometry data, the, the depth and all that kind of stuff? Or is it all closed source? Yeah, in the moment it's a closed shop. Yeah, we just use it uh, internally. But um, maybe in the future it should be um, Giving to the uh, yeah, as I said in the beginning, what's is also in for the stakeholders, and I think uh, it's also relevant for them to to um, I don't know bring in their own data, for example, or um, yeah, get out some inter uh, interesting informations. Yeah, in the future it's planned. Yeah. Very cool digital uh, digital twin. Thank you. I've got a little bit uh, different question though. Uh, you spoke about uh, harbor in the uh, city center. And uh, do you have a clue about water quality in uh, Hamburg Harbor? Because I, I think it would be a blast if, we go, uh, if you could really swim in uh, Elbe <laughs> River a little bit closer to the harbor. But I really don't know about uh, water quality. I usually don't. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I, I need to disappoint you. <laughs> I'm not really oh. sure about that information, um, but uh, yeah, maybe we can implement some sensors and uh, to measure the water yeah, quality, and then you have <laughs> this information on your mobile phone in the next days. Maybe. Yeah, please do. <laughs> yeah, would be great. <laughs> Another question, anyone? 
Good. Anyone? Don't make me walk down the stairs again. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for jumping in on short notice. And we will continue in a second with the next and last talk. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.